Before we get started, I want to give you some kind of basic definitions before we see the, the system at work, just so you have an idea of what we're working with. So tile map basics. So the tile map is composed of several different pieces. We have the grid, which is a component which controls the properties of the grid that we're going to draw onto. And tile maps are always children of a grid. If you've worked with the UI, this is similar to a UI canvas. We have the tile map. This is a game object with a component that we're going to paint tiles onto. And you can think of this as similar to a layer in Photoshop, right? So we're going to have multiple different tile maps. Um, if we look at our level, uh, each of those foreground and background layers is on its own tile map. We have the tile map renderer, which is a component which controls how tiles are rendered, including sorting, material, and masking. We have the tile palette, which is an asset which holds a collection of tiles we can select from. And then we have the tile itself, which in its simplest form is an asset which holds a reference to a sprite, a color, value, and a collider type. However, we can also create scriptable tiles, right? And this is where things start to get really, really cool in this system. So scriptable tiles can be scripted in C-sharp to create custom behavior, which executes when the tile map is refreshed. So the tile map, the tiles in a tile map that you've already drawn can change as you draw new tiles, and we're gonna see that. Generally, tile, scriptable tiles contain rendering and collision info. So what sprite we're gonna show, what kind of collider is gonna be on the tile, and so on. Scriptable brushes, on the other hand, can be scripted in C-sharp and will execute whatever code when the user paints, right? So the, the prefabs that you saw in the demo are painted onto the grid using a scriptable brush that spawns a prefab when you click, right? But you could have it do all kinds of behavior, whatever behavior you can imagine, right? When the user clicks to draw, you can run some code, right? Using a scriptable brush. And this is all part of the kind of tile map uh, API. So there's some great examples of this in the 2D extras project. And these I've already added to this project. So if you download this project, you don't need to download anything else. But if you're working on your own project and you want to just go grab them from GitHub, you can uh, at github.com unity-technologies slash 2D extras. Um, and I highly recommend that you check those out if you're interested in creating your own custom tiles. So here we have our complete scene. I'm gonna switch over to the incomplete scene, right? Which is tile map start. Um, and this is just an empty scene. We've got our background, right? Uh, and we've got, which has got some clouds and a gradient. And then we've got our penny pixel character. The penny pixel has a number of components, including a player platformer controller script. I did a hour long live session writing this script. And so I recommend that you check that out if you're curious about the scripting aspect of it. It's provided complete here uh, and already configured and ready to use. But if you want to dive into the scripting process for that, you can check out that session. Uh, and I can put a link in the chat as well. And the so what we're going to do is we're going to start drawing some tiles in here. So I've already opened up the tile palette here. And this is under window, tile palette. And this is where we're gonna select the tiles that we wanna draw and draw them into the scene. But before we can add any tiles, we need to add a tile map, right? So what I'm gonna do is right click in the hierarchy here, choose 2D object, tile map. Now we'll notice that this spawns a grid and we can see the grid here, right? When it's selected in the scene view. And it also, the grid has a tile map, right? So the grid has a grid component. We can manipulate the cell size uh, we're going to stick with a one by one size here. We can also create a gap between, uh, cells and we can swizzle the cells to change the coordinate order. If we're doing something different with our coordinates, in this case, X, Y, Z is fine. Uh, and the default settings are fine on the tile map. We have the tile map component, right? Which I described earlier. This is where we're going to be painting tiles into, and then the tile map renderer, which is going to display the tiles for us. And we'll be using these as we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to relabel this to platforms. This is going to be our ground. And I'm going to, in my tile palette, I'm going to choose the grass platform palette. And so here we have a palette of tiles, right? And I'm just going to select one of them, this middle tile, 
and I've got the paint with active brush tool selected. So now all I need to do in the scene view is just click and drag and I can just draw a lovely platform for Penny Pixel to stand on. I can click once to select the end pieces. Let's get a center dark piece, a side piece, a bottom corner, the bottom horizontal, the other bottom corner, and the other wall. And there we've created a lovely platform, right? So if you want to, you can just click on tiles, paint them. You can also use shift click to erase things when you're in the brush mode and then just left click to draw new ones. And so at its core, this is kind of the core functionality of tile map, right? Selecting tiles from the tile palette and drawing them onto a tile map. And this is a great start, right? So what if we wanted to bring in some of our own artwork and create our own tiles to draw into the tile map? If we want to create our own tile palette, right? So the way that we would do that is we would go to, click on the palette window here, choose create new palette. And I'm just gonna call this one test. I'm not actually gonna make one we're gonna use. I'll just show you how to do it. So we're gonna go ahead and click create. I'm gonna put this in my palettes folder. And then we'll see that a new asset has been created called test. And this has a grid and it has the tile palette on it, right? So the next thing that I need is some sprites. So I'm gonna go down here to tile sets. Let's just grab this jungle tile set. Now, if we click on this, let's see if I can get the preview up here. There we go. Um, we can see the sprites themselves, right? The individual sprites. These all are coming out of a larger sprite sheet. It's worth noting as you're importing your sprites, you'll probably want to slice them in the sprite editor on a grid, right? And you wanna make sure that your pixels to units, the resolution of the sprites matches the resolution of your grid, right? So in this case, the pixels per unit are 128 and these are 128 by 128 square sprites, right? And so, <clears throat> we want to make sure that those match so it'll match the grid. The You you can also do like multi-sprite things here like this uh, tree, palm tree plant thing. And I'll show you uh, how we can work with those in an effective way. So what I'm going to do is I you can, of course, drag one uh, sprite at a time, but much more convenient. I'm just going to shift click here and drag them all into my tile palette. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna automatically generate tile assets, right? So here we have a folder of tiles. It's gonna make a new test tiles folder and select that as the destination. It's gonna automatically generate my 32 tile assets. And we can take a look at what those are. So these are here in our test tiles. Here's one of them. We have a preview, we have a reference to the sprite, we have a color, and then we have a collider type, right? So now, if I wanna draw with these, I'm ready to do so, right? So let's say I'll take my eraser tool, erase with active brush, which we can also access with shift. I'll erase all of this stuff. And then I can, for example, let's grab the top here and draw that in, we'll grab this corner. One thing we can also do is by using the square bracket keys, we can rotate tiles. So let's do that. Uh, like so. And then I will grab a horizontal one and rotate it around and rotate it again and rotate it again. And then I'll grab a, grab a couple different center tiles. I could also drag select a bunch of these and just drop them in as a group, which is pretty cool. And that's the way we would work with if we had uh, a bunch of plants, we could do that. It looks kind of weird with the different ones. Let's, let's get rid of that. Let's make it regular. Okay. So of course we could do this, right? We can, you know, draw tiles in, we can rotate them. Um, and as I showed, we could drag select uh, groups of them. Right, so if you wanna create your own tiles, it's really that easy. You just drag them in, it'll create the tile assets. Now you may, may be wondering, why do we have these tile assets? Well, one reason is, let's say I've done all this work, right? I've created my tiles, where's my, uh, 
the one that I'm actually using. It's this one, right? Is that it? Yeah. Um, and then I think, oh man, I actually want to make a change to that art. Well, I can go ahead and just select the sprite here and maybe change it to this sprite, right? And the referenced, all the tiles in the tile map are referencing the sprite asset, right? Not the sprite texture. So they will be updated or we could apply, we could click on the color and we could apply a color tint to them, right? And so we can make changes at the asset level that will be then reflected in all of our tile maps, which is pretty cool. And these are basically just like uh, little scriptable objects, right? For you programmers out there who are holding a reference to all the data. And this is a way that I like to work architecturally a lot, working with scriptable objects. Okay, so we've got our kind of strange ominous platform here. We're not actually gonna keep that for our level. So I'm just going to delete that real quick and let's replace it with our, we'll go back to our grass platforms and I'm just going to drag select and put in a couple of these floating squares. And we can just drag select and stamp them in, right? Really quick, easy way to work. So now we've got a kind of a good idea about how to bring in our own tiles, how to edit the tile map. In the next section, we're gonna look at adding collision.